Hey everyone, how's it going? I got another uh, interesting motor for you guys. I'm not completely sure what kind of motor it is. It's some hybrid induction synchronous motor, I think. But uh, I've never seen quite a design like this one. It's uh, very old, as you can see from the plug. And uh, it's, other than a, a worn front bearing, it's actually in pretty good shape. So it's a uh, Canadian General Electric motor, um, 110 volts, 4.4 amps, 1.6 horsepower, 1725 RPM, 60 cycles, so nothing really special there. Um, model is a 6, 60245-1. There's not much to see on the outside, other than its power goes into this box here, and I'll, I'm going to completely uh, take this motor apart and show you guys the inner workings of it as well. But um, this isn't just an electrical box. This actually houses the brushes that run this motor. It's not a repulsion uh, start induction motor. like like in my other video, it's something different and that's kind of why I'm doing this video because I am not quite sure what category this motor would fall under. But um, I've got it hooked up to power. I will run it for you guys. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna fire it up solely off my uh, Variac. You can see what the amperage does and all that. So let's see what's, where it actually starts turning. Let me bring this a little closer here. Get the light, get the light off the. It's really bad. There. All right, so right about it's 10 volts. About 25. So with 25 volts, it starts turning six and a half amps. This motor is by no means quiet. So that's running at about 30, 32 volts. I'll bring it up to its rated. So that's at about 115 volts. You see the amperage actually fluctuates quite a bit with it. I'll power it down and just uh, turn it on at its full speed. I don't know if you could see what the uh, locked rotor amps was. I'll try that one more time. Let's see if we can get a look at that. It's pretty quick. That's 25. Not bad. All right, so I'll uh, I'll take the bolts out of this motor and I'll show you what this what's weird about this one. All right, so I'll show you behind this little panel where the plug goes first. And you can see it's actually uh, it's actually spring it's got a spring load behind it. Now I am completely disconnected electrically here. So see it's not just an it's just not just an electrical cover, it's the only electrical thing in this. So it's just two carbon brushes, spring-loaded carbon brushes, and that's it. Now on the other side, you've got two contact discs that have seen better days. So yeah, so this, uh, hope this is getting you guys even more and more curious about what this type of motor this is. I have had this motor apart. I have polished these up to the best of my ability and they they were a little bit better but the I have ran it a few times but um it's not it's not that loud 
once those uh, brushes have, are not contacting it. But so, uh, so yeah, so yeah, two two electrical points, just two wires going right into those, and that's it. And then they contact in there. So I'll I'll take the rest of these bolts out and um, pull this thing apart. All right. So I guess I'll take the front off first. I have cleaned this up. So there's your front. This is cast iron. Very heavy. Very well built. And here's the front of your rotor. So you can see you have your windings in here. And this is just all solid. There's no there's no wind stationary windings at all. If I remember right, this should just pull right out. So if you look in there, there is nothing. There's nothing in there. There's no windings at all in that rest of that. It's just solid cast iron back and a uh, and that's completely solid there. Still dirty. But this is the interesting part: is your rotor. So you've got your contacts there. They look like brass contacts. This has had this had quite some divoting on this side, which I've polished out as best as I can. That's why it's kind of loud. But it's uh, it I don't know. It's like what what the what gets me is with this motor. Why would they have the only set of windings on the rotor. Why not? Why not have these the, these here on the rotor and have the windings on the stator? Why go through the trouble to have a wear point here and brushes? Why why not just have a solid core without windings on the rotor part? That's what gets me. So. So anyway, you have your two contacts here, your line and your neutral. You've got a, a winding contact there, and you've got three more there. I'm trying to keep this in camera view here as I do this. I just aim this down a little bit. So you got four points. Now you've got a centrifugal switch in here. I'm just trying to remember. Um, I think... Yeah, uh, let me screwdriver for that. I'm pretty sure it's this part here that moves out. That's not easy to do. Yeah. So, I'll try and show you guys. So, if you look carefully, so this moves in and out. So, that's a centrifugal switch. So my guess is, I'll zoom in a little bit there, so it stays focused. There, good enough. So my guess is that this this winding here is engaged when the motor starts. This flies out like that, which makes a con which is a contact right there. When it, it flies out and disengages this contact, and the other, so my guess is this this one here and one of these, I don't know which, it would be very difficult to figure out which, are like a start winding, and the other two are just your run. But I mean, why go to the trouble of having all your windings in the ro rotor part? Why? Why would you do that? You know, like motor these days. Like this isn't the greatest example. This here's not the greatest example, but you guys should be familiar with a motor like this. Just a standard little synchronous motor you find in fridges and fans and heaters and any number of appliance appliances. But they have the windings on the um, the stator part. And 
just a solid core on the rotor. You can't see the rotor on this, but you know it's in there. It seems like they went out of their way to make this costly and overcomplicate it. Have, have any of you seen a motor designed quite like this? I mean, that's definitely not an, um, a repulsion start induction motor. They've got commentator bars like in my, uh, like that other motor when I did. So, and just show you guys, so your power, so this literally sits just like that. And, that, and this rotates around. And creates your kind. That's why the motor is so noisy when it runs. It's just rubbing against these brass plates. So yeah, if anyone's seen a motor like this, um, let me know, or maybe they know why they did this overcomplicated design and introduced additional wear parts into it. Um, I'd like to know. So uh, I'll put this back together and um, I don't know. Maybe I'll put a maybe I'll put a fan on it. Like, to show you what it's like under a load. All right, you guys might recognize this fan from the other uh, the repulsion start motor video. Same fan, just uh, the different motor. Fortunately, this motor spins the right direction, so that's that's good. All right, so I'm going to use this to bring it up to speed and just to get an amp reading. I've got a I got a meter right there. Let's see if I bring the dial up a little bit. It's a little noisy. The fan amplifies it. speed right there. We're drawing above 4.6 amps. So right at its max load. This fan is probably is probably much as big as it, this motor would be able to handle anyway. It's a little noisy because the bearing, front bearing is worn, but uh, yeah. I'll do a I'll do a start up right from uh, right from standstill. However, since I, I don't want to damage this meter, so I'll just plug it directly. I'll just plug it directly into into the socket. So I'll set this for. 115 volts. Won't get an amp reading, but you'll see it how quickly its startup is. And there you go. So yeah, it's a very weird little, I guess, induction style of motor, or something overcomplicated. More wear person should have. But uh, let me know what you guys think. Maybe I'm completely wrong on what style of motor this is. Maybe it's not induction. Uh, I don't know. But uh, yeah, so uh, thanks for watching. Hit that thumbs up if you liked this video. Thumbs down if you didn't. Subscribe if you haven't. And uh, thanks for watching, everyone.